But I teach economics, and uh, our dean came to me and said, would you be interested in incorporating GIS into your economics courses? And I was real interested in it because of what's number one up here. Having that exposure to GIS before, I knew that a lot of those questions that my students ask, I could easily show with a map. Like I would tell them that we have this humongous trade deficit, and they'd say, do other countries in the world have trade deficits? And I would say, no, this is a zero-sum game. But after I started doing GIS, I just made the map. And so then they could say, oh, these countries have it, these countries don't, et cetera, et cetera. And so it was very, it, it was just, it's a, it was a way to answer their questions that was more meaningful than just saying, yes, no, Canada has a surplus, you know, see the whole world will be it was easy, it was eye-catching, even when they weren't asking me questions, but there were things I believed that they needed to know. For instance, when we study the unemployment rate, what is it in all the countries around the world? So it was a way to give them information that really in economics, they have never been able to get before. It's, it just hasn't been available to them. Because it's so much data. And they don't need it in detail. They don't need to know exactly what the employment rate in Canada and Mexico and everybody is, but just to see the ranges. So the way I developed it for my class was to learn GIS myself. It's not expected that every teacher is going to want to do that, and we'll get to that in a minute on ways that we can support teachers who want to bring it into their class but don't have the time or the interest to, you know, to learn it at, in depth themselves. But that's what I did. And just to come back to the student learning outcomes again, but one of them is global awareness. Very easy to see how GIS fits in the global awareness. Technological awareness, that's an easy one too. Obviously, they're learning a, a new technology. And the third one is critical thinking. Some of the GIS that I did involved critical thinking. Some of it didn't involve critical thinking. How it worked in the classroom. I actually had a research grant to prove that, prove or disprove, that GIS was valuable to students in learning economics. So I had great incentive to figure out how to do this optimal, optimally, and it was a learning process for me. This all went on in the fall. It was a learning process for me. I, really, I had done a little bit of it last spring, but not that much. So my first method involved, when we would come up with an economic concept such as unemployment, trade, gross domestic product, inflation, I would put the map, a map of the entire world up on the screen, and I would say, let's just look at that. Do you see any patterns? What's going on? And then we would zoom into the different continents and different regions at once. And we did that for about five to ten minutes, five different times. And the students were fascinated. They were absolutely fascinated when they saw them. What I mean by economic indicators is what, just, what I just said. Unemployment, inflation, gross domestic product per capita, gross domestic product, gross domestic product growth, and trade surplus or deficit. They were fascinated when I tested on them. They couldn't remember a thing. <laughs> so, <laughs> method two, which actually, before the first test, I tried both method one and method two. Method two took them to an internet site, and it showed the entire world, and they were actually, what they were, what they were looking at in this site, and it was a real good lesson, was trade blocks. So they could click on NAFTA, and they would see that, you know, U.S., Canada, and Mexico are in NAFTA. They did a little bit better on the test on this one, and I assumed it was because they had actually gotten in there and clicked around it themselves, rather than just seeing it. The third method was the one that was really successful. Over three quarters of the class tested that they got it. Method three, I gave them both homework and a follow-up discussion. What I really did was I scaled it down for them. We dealt with one continent, we dealt with two indicators. I want you to compare gross domestic product, per capita gross domestic product, and gross domestic product growth. And I want you to look at both of them. And so they, they did it on homework. There's an internet site that I had put up. San Diego State put up an internet site with a map for me. And again, we followed it up with a discussion. I asked the students 
Um, one, th one way I tested the research was basically with, it, with, the, with test questions, with essay questions, which I've talked about. I also asked them what they liked most about GIS. I asked them three questions. This is the first. Top answer. Easy to see the data. Easy to tell what's going on. Liked the visual nature of it. What did you like <coughs> least? And the answer in the confusing to navigate and to understand. I made the assumption, I don't know why, I've been teaching since 1995, but I made the assumption that when I said go to this tutorial to see how to click around on the maps before you do the maps, they were actually going to do that. Which of course they didn't, so they had a little bit of a trouble navigating the map for a while. Um, it's, a, it's a change in the next semester. We're going to go through the navigation together in, in some detail. And this was the most important one to answer my, you know, one of my main questions and what I want to know, how did it contribute to helping you learn economics? The answers to that were very, very positive, and the top answer was what I had hoped it would be. We learned about countries in the real world. We learned how to compare one country to the other. What was really interesting is the student responses to the survey questions, and there was a, a few more survey questions, and if anybody wants the, the full survey and the answers, I'll give it to you. Really interesting is even method one, they believe they learned a lot. Method two, they believe they learned a lot. They just believe they learn a lot more than their essay questions were showing. So that's another thing I'm going to um, work with a little bit next semester is, you know, is there a chance that I just ask questions in a way that wasn't properly evaluating their knowledge? At any rate, they were really enthused, really enthused about it. And that was, that was, uh, very hard part of the team. Was GIS helpful in learning economics? This wasn't the open ended one, scale from the five, three point eight. Five was the most helpful, one was the least helpful. I want to show you just real quickly a sample of method three. It's not the exact method three that we did, it's not South America, it's actually Asia. 